Amen. God bless all of you precious people who are taking the time to listen, learn, and understand about the rapture and the tribulation and things that take place before the rapture, during the rapture, and after the rapture. Uh, there has been documentation. By the way, uh, I am Dr. Gabrielle Hope, a, um, an evangelist, television evangelist, as well as pastor in Buena Park, California, and a, a missionary mostly around the world, several, several countries, and a great honor to build orphanages, dig wells, save souls, and begin churches and help pastors step into their call and fulfill God's order for them on this earth. Having said that, you can look on my channels. Um, I have several people that help upload our YouTube channels and manage our website pages and so somehow we ended up with five <laughs> different YouTube channels. So they're, they're all visible on the main channel. If you go to I A M Gabriel Hope, and that's all capital I, capital A, capital N, and then small Gabriel Hope, one word, you will see at the bottom of that screen, that's our main channel. And you will see at the bottom of that screen the other four channels. So in those channels there are numerous other um, numerous other uh, videos, hundreds, as a matter of fact, of other videos that, by the grace of God, this ministry has been able to document for the world to see for the last several several years so some of the videos are old obviously um, and they're still going uh, and some of them are are new so um, many of them are new but uh, nonetheless we have a good 400 and some videos that we're trying to upload now before the end of September 2017 that's what this taping is this taping, though, is about what is at hand. If it was Christmas time, we would be talking about Jesus' birth. If it were what the world calls Easter and what we call first fruits, if it was first fruits time, we would be talking about the resurrection of our Messiah, Jesus Christ, Yeshua HaMashiach. If it were Thanksgiving time, we would be giving thanks to all of the things that the Lord has done for us and that his precious people have done on this earth to help one another. And when it's rapture time, we talk about the rapture. People out there have been saying there is no rapture. Well, let them say it. They will surely be left behind. And there are so many Bible verses that reference the rapture. In my classes that I teach, Messianic Torah classes on Monday nights at 6.30, and then we have a deliverance class on Thursdays at 6.30, and we have other services that we hold as well, but those are the two main uh, services that uh, people come to learn more and to get delivered. In that class, a young lady said to me, but I don't believe in the rapture because the description is not there. And I said, well, I understand that. But uh, gambling is described in the Bible and the word is not there. Homosexuality is described in the Bible, but the actual word is not there. Hurricanes is described in the Bible, but the actual word is not there. A bomb is described in the Bible, but the actual word is not there. On and on and on. So is it with the rapture. The reason for that is because the Bible was originally written in three different languages. Hebrew, number one, Greek, as well as Aramaic. So to put it in just one word would not be fair. So to, to make it more understandable, they just wrote the description of what they were trying to portray. 
So the description of rapture. In Hebrew, which is what Jesus is, and what the majority of the Bible was written in Hebrew. Okay. And like I said, a little bit of Aramaic, a little bit of Greek. Beautiful, beautiful, all combined together to make a big puzzle. In Hebrew, rapture means to catch away. In Hebrew, rapture means to gather together. In Hebrew, rapture means to snatch away, to avoid danger. In Hebrew, rapture means to catch up. Like an upward motion. Yeah. So 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, verse 16 through 18. If you are writing the Bible verses down, that's the first one, of course. 1 Corinthians 15, 52 talks about the rapture. Oh, very two profound ones. Revelation chapter 3, verse 10 says, To he that overcometh, overcomes what? Overcome sin. Overcome temptation. To he that overcomes, I will keep you from the hour of wrath that is to come upon the earth. How would he keep us from the hour of wrath to come upon the earth if we live on the earth unless we are not on the earth? Hence, the rapture. Hmm. Numerous Bible verses, one after another after another, speak of the rapture, and I wanted to get into them with you. But more today, I wanted to talk about the signs. I don't want to leave anything out if I can, but I don't want to make this forever long. But I'm praying to God that it is so beneficial to you that you understand perhaps a little bit more than was told to you before. And perhaps someone else will add to that. And the next person will add to that and tell the pieces to the puzzle for God uh, to bring into fruition the full comprehension for you of the rapture of the church pre-trib and the others there are seven total raptures in the bible seven total and i can just briefly touch on them a minute enoch was the first one elijah was the second jesus was the third jesus is considered first fruits plural with first flute fruits he always carries a crowd with him. So when Jesus ascended into heaven, who did he take with him? All the saints of old that floated around the earth and walked around the earth for the 40 days. He led them out of, out of the holding tank, if you will, called paradise. That's another subject and, and message that we can get into later. It's a deep subject that is very, very fascinating and is completely biblical based. And once they were seen around Jerusalem, they ascended into heaven and were gone with Jesus. Okay. The fourth, the fourth rapture, we have the first one, Enoch, the second one, Elijah, the third one, Yahshua, right? Okay. Now there's four, five, six, and seven. I believe, and I could be wrong on this. You know, we just study, we put the blue with the blue, the green with the green, the yellow, yellow, purple, purple, white, white. And we put the dots together in the Bible. And this is how we study the word of God. And we realize if they, you know, if they, if the dots all match, they're talking about the same group of people. God will never tell one prophet or one person everything. He gives each a little bit here and there and there so first of all we work together second of all we learn from each other third of all we're not god so we cannot know everything only he knows everything amen okay so i believe that the fourth rapture was when paul went to heaven 
and Acts chapter 1 and 1, 2 Corinthians 12, 1 through 4. Paul, my, my Bible tells me, my study Bible tells me that Paul wrote about that. He said, 14 years ago, I knew a man. He was talking about himself. He's very humble. I knew a man, blah, blah, blah. He said, you know, they ended up going to heaven and coming back. One of my favorite stories about the ascension, and I can't get into that on this one because that's another message and I don't want to get off track. But my point is, is that happened in 60 A.D., well, if you minus 14 years from 16 AD, you end up with 46 AD. So now you go back in your Bible and you look what took place during 46 AD. And your study Bible will show that Paul was stoned and thrown outside of the city. Uh, he was stoned and thrown outside of the city in 46 AD. So putting the two together we're thinking when he got beat stoned and thrown out of the city thinking he was dead that perhaps the Lord allowed them to believe he didn't have a pulse and he took Paul on on his way to heaven let's go well they're beating up your natural body let me take you on a supernatural trip and we'll bring you back but for right now God was taking him out of the picture and he visited heaven. Now that's just something I'm putting in there that doesn't necessarily mean that's considered a rapture, but he could have raptured him and brought him back. But I'm thinking it was more of a vision, but some people may think that and others, but it, it's not wrong to think it isn't. And it's really not wrong to think it is. So it's an option because the fact is two Corinthians 12 verse one through four did happen. The fact is the rapture, he did go to heaven and he did come back and he wrote about it. Okay, so let's move on <clears throat> to number five. Number five means grace, mercy and favor, but grace is what's needed for salvation. Grace is what's needed to get us to heaven and when we accept the faith that God has given us that Jesus is the risen Messiah he imparts to us grace giving us something we did not deserve because we were saved and received into him while he was on the cross imagine he took on the sin of the world and before we were even born he knew what we would do what we would say that's wrong and he took on our sin so we receive salvation long before we even knew how powerful this transfer of sin was from us to him. So number five is the rapture of the church. Us right now found in 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, 16 through 18, 1 Corinthians 15, 50 through 22, Titus 2, 13 which is called the rapture is called the blessed hope. Thank God. So this is considered the fifth rapture. The sixth rapture is now the 144,000, which is in Revelation chapter seven and, and uh, 14. Revelation 7 to 14, it talks about the 144,000. They're the elect calling them from the four winds and the four corners of the earth who have been brought down by God Almighty and Jesus Christ to be able to help the tribulation saints make it without giving in to the one world order, the microchip, the antichrist, the beast, or the false prophet, and accepting Jesus as the Messiah and ultimately paying the price, torture and death for Christ. That is the sixth rapture spoken of again in Revelation 7 and Revelation 14. However, I love that Revelation 7 and 14. I'll tell you what, I, for the longest time, I wasn't sure who the 144,000 was. But just to give a short recap, the 144,000 are spoken of, first of all, in Matthew chapter 2 and Jeremiah chapter 31, verse 15, 16, and 17. Matthew chapter 2 Jeremiah 31, 15, 16, and 17, 
Then you skip ahead to Ezekiel chapter 37, Isaiah chapter 53, and back to Revelation chapter 7 and Revelation chapter 14. Um, you may have to rewind this and take down these Bible verses. Uh, if I'm speaking a little bit too fast, I will... Temp slowing down here uh, for those of you who are writing it down. Matthew chapter 2 talks about the two year old little Hebrew boys being cut up and their heads cutting off, being killed. Uh, Herod's attempt to Herod's attempt to kill the baby Jesus and he did not. Baby Jesus therefore was, he grew up around everyone that was older or younger than him when it came to the males because everyone around him and the entire tribe of Israel all 12 tribes had deceased that day uh, numerous numerous dots are put together like I said words with words uh, like like the Bible says line upon line precept upon precept that's exactly what it's saying so you take the word coastlines you match them up you take the word cut off you take the word first fruits um, you, uh, virgins these these male Jews never sinned well you can't live on this earth um, to a, even an adolescent age and not sin. So the only way these 144,000 male Jews is what it says about Revelation 7 and Revelation 14. The 144 male Jews, the only way that they could not sin is if they weren't old enough to sin. So the little babies were just little babies. They, could, they, did, they, they didn't have the mindset to sin. And it also said they were first fruits. The only other place in the Bible that's first fruits when it talks about human beings is Jesus Christ, which puts them in the same time frame. So Jesus and the 144,000 all came from the same time frame, which tells you they were the two year old little baby boys that were murdered by King Herod. Uh, their blood cried out for innocence and God's going to bring them back. How do we know that? Because at the end of chapter uh, Matthew chapter 2 it says was not this spoken of by the prophet Jeremiah and it talks about how Rachel could not be comforted because her child had been murdered and Rachel of course is one of the mothers of Israel so you go to Jeremiah and you say hmm what does Jeremiah have to say and you find it in Jeremiah chapter 31 15 16 uh, and 17 and even on farther too and it says that um, the that the Rachel could not be comforted because her child had been murdered. The exact same Bible verse to the T that is in Matthew 2. And it describes the innocence of these people that were killed. So, you know, the innocence means children, babies. Um, today's innocence would be abortions and the murders of little children. Back then, we were talking about King Herod in Matthew chapter 2, what he did to those children. Okay. Um, moving on then, Revelation chapter 7 and Revelation chapter 14 talk about the description of them, how they are male Jews. And 14 says, they appear in heaven. It didn't say they were murdered again. No. It is appointed unto man once to die, and after this the judgment. So since the 144,000 were already dead as babies, they are coming back in their glorified body. They will walk through walls. They will sit at a table, eat with you, and blink and be gone. So people know that they are literally part of 100, the 144,000. They will listen to them and they will know they were sent by God to encourage the tribulation saints not to take the microchip and to give their life for Jesus Christ, period. Okay, so on that note, um, that is the um, rapture that we are talking about. And six rapture what I'm what I'm thinking is the first fruits and the first fruits have to line up Jesus when he was first fruits he went into heaven with all the saints of old and these hundred and forty four thousand are also considered first fruits 
Therefore, they also bring a crowd with them. Hmm, who's the crowd? Revelation chapter 14 says so. And it goes on and tells about it later on in the book of Revelation as well, too. How the 144,000 bring with them, they usher in the tribulation saints. And they introduce them. This is a great multitude who passed through and suffered the great tribulation and made it here. And the Bible says the multitude will be great. So Jesus brought all the saints of old with him to heaven uh, in the third resurrection. Um, or excuse me, a third, um, not resurrection, third rapture, if you will. Of course, he was resurrected, but the third rapture, since we're talking about the seven raptures of the Bible and the first fruits in the New Testament, the book of Revelation also brings a crowd with them and they are the tribulation saints. Okay, the very last rapture of the Bible is the two famous um witnesses, which I believe are Enoch and, and Elijah. Uh, a lot of people like to say it's Moses. Um, not sure about that. I, I doubt it because it's appointed unto man only once to die. And after this a judgment and Moses already died, um, the Bible said he died and, and the Lord took his bones. And we believe the reason that God took his bones is because Moses was such a, um, profound person to all the Jews, you know, the Mosaic law. And, uh, they almost had him on a pedestal to the point where I believe God never wanted his bones and his grave to be worshiped as, as the, uh, Muhammad is. Um, and I believe that, um, the only remnant he wanted left of Moses was the 10 commandments that Moses sacrificed up on the mountain, his body, his life, his time, um, to be able to meet with God like like no other human being outside of Jesus Christ was able to do. Amazing. God loved Moses so much. Oh my. So I believe he just protected his bones from humanity as well as the demonic activity, the demonic world who is greater than most people can imagine. Uh, supernatural world is greater than the natural world. Angels from heaven are all over this place. Demons from hell are all over this place and we happen to be the minority and it's a spiritual battle every day uh, do what's right or do what's wrong and these forces from both sides are there to uh, both of them are there to encourage humans to do things either the right way or the wrong way and it's our choice okay revelation chapter 11 again talks about the two witnesses how they will be killed. So Enoch and Elijah have not died and God specified that Elijah would come back. So therefore, since Elijah is coming back and he did not decease and they both get killed during the tribulation for three days, um, we believe e Enoch is the next one because Enoch also had the same powers that Moses did. There's even a book of Enoch referred in Jude. Uh, we have to be careful on that, though, because there's also a fake book of Enoch, and then there's the authentic book of Enoch. Uh, there's the book of Jasher, there's the book of Dan, um, there's the book of Maccabees, and we have to be careful to make sure we're not reading the fake one instead of the real one. Jesus, God Almighty, the Holy Spirit, would never have referred us to a book outside of the Bible unless it was worth reading or worth uh, understanding uh, the 66 canon of the Bible the books of the Bible uh, were necessary for our souls to make it to heaven the extras are like pieces to the puzzle they're like the icing on the cake uh, it's exciting to read them because it un you, it fills in the gap like where Cain's wife came from or fills in the gap where the Bible kind of skips over things and gives a big general outline of humanity which is just beautiful. It leaves openings for us to try to understand and meditate on. And this is why the Lord wants us to meditate. He wants us to wonder why. And then he wants us to figure out why. And the more we wonder, the more he'll tell us. Because he did say, all things will come to light, including the rapture. So, okay, now we're going to jump into the subject that 
I am talking about. Now that I've given the foundation of, yes, there is a rapture. Yes, there's been seven raptures. Yes, here's the Bible verses. And when we touched on the 144,000, since there's such a controversial, um, you know, uh, group of people that like to argue who the 144,000 are, or there's some, there's some really, you know, silly people out there that think that they are part of the 144,000 and they're going to, you know, grow a ministry during a tribulation and win a bunch of souls to Christ. Honey, you're going to be hiding underneath a tree. Uh, you're, you're needing to, you, you need to spare what you have hiding out in your household. And there's, there will be meetings, church meetings held in people's houses all over this earth. Uh, and that's the way it's supposed to be. And there'll be a great revival. The great revival is during the tribulation, not on television, not in a big meeting somewhere, but in everybody's homes everywhere. The church is going to panic and realize they missed the rapture. And they should not have, that they had one foot in the world and one foot in God. And they needed to have both feet in the Lord. So this is, um, yeah, this is the foundation, if you will, of the main subject. What's happening on September 23rd, 2017? What happens after seven, September 23rd, 2017? And what right now is happening before that time? And is any of this foundationally biblical? Is any of this worth taking a second look? Is any of this work worth um, thinking about, meditating about, and just putting the brakes on for a minute and saying, wait a minute, wait a minute. Well, I have another video that I just did uh, with my congregation um, some of them come to my classes and some of them have to work. And by, by the grace of God, the ones that are able to make it to the classes come. And we just did a class on the 33 signs of the rapture. So I'm going to skip through them name by name by name. And then I'm going to give you the Bible verses that tell you where they are. Uh, before the list begins, I want to give this parable. And it's actually true. But without saying names, a parable is what it needs to be. A husband and wife were together, newlyweds. She became pregnant. They still live their single lives and yet married life. You know how it is with the transition. You're still hanging out with your girlfriends. He's still hanging out with his. And this is where a lot of the adjusting comes in. And a lot of the adjusting sometimes either makes or breaks a marriage. Because you realize your spouse needs to be your best friend, period, uh, outside of Jesus Christ. And the glue will not stay held unless the Holy Spirit, word of God, is imparted in that marriage. However, um, this couple, he would still hang out with his buddies. She would still hang out with, and they were barely saved. They knew Jesus in their mind. They really never read the Bible at home. It wasn't a priority, but they would go to church on occasion. They would give their tithe on occasion. They would go to a Christmas show and they would do, and they thought that they were, you know, above average Christians. Um, until they evaluated themselves per the word of God. The word of God is a mirror. It is a mirror to us. When we read it, we see ourselves. Either we line up with it or we don't. You don't need a counselor. You don't need a pastor. You don't need a priest. And you don't need a nagging spouse to tell you what you are and what you're not. That's the truth. Or a nagging parent or a nagging friend. Some people have them, unfortunately. The word of God is a sharp, two-edged sword. Pierces even to the dividing of us under soul and spirit, and it's a discerner of the thoughts and intents of our hearts. It is a mirror to what we are and what we're not. So when you sit down to read your Bible, when we sit down to read our Bible, we go, oh, wow. Especially when it comes to chapter, Matthew chapter 5. Ah, 
it's almost the most difficult chapter in the whole Bible to to mimic, fulfill, and 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 manifest in our life. It's very difficult, and that's the new, if you will, if you want to call it the new be attitudes that we need to have this attitude be this attitude ah gracious me I, I believe almost every human being that is 12 years and above would fail that test so we must oh goodness we must give in to the Lord and do things his way this couple she was seven and a half months pregnant he went on a game night everything was fine no pregnancy complications a few minor bumps in the road came along she would usually go to bed he would come home two three four in the morning because his buddies lived in the next city over and she was not so much concerned about him being with other women but as she just knew when he's done hanging out with his buddies watching the game whatever they did um, then he'll be home and so their relationship was somewhat at peace with that even when she was pregnant seven and a half months she went to bed all was well until about four o'clock in the morning when her water broke and then she panicked and she tried to get a hold of her husband could not get a hold of her husband she tried to get a hold of him again could not Fortunately for her, her sister and her best friend lived just a couple of streets away. So she then picked up the phone and tried to call her sister. Help, help. No answer at the sister's house. Everyone's sleeping. And then she tried the best friend, and the best friend picked up the phone. Groggy. Oh, wow. Didn't know. Ran over. Woke up the sister. Drove over to the wife's house now, and the three women are headed for the hospital immediately finally as they reach the hospital the wife is able to get a hold of her husband he's in shock what oh no we just what finished playing poker whatever game that I believe he said that they were praying and he said I'm on my way I'm on my way I cannot believe this happened so though they admitted the wife she they began the process and the husband spoke to the sister and the best friend and he expressed these two things he said, I am so disappointed and frustrated that my wife's water broke on my game night. Is there any way you can ask the doctor to please make sure the baby does not come until I have arrived at the hospital? And the sister and the best friend told him, I'm sorry, but the baby's on its way any second it's coming out she's dilating the water has broke I'm sorry this is an analogy for the coming of the Lord whether we like it or not whether we are ready or not why whether it's good timing or not the Lord is coming the water has broken and dilating is deep in process how do we know these things how can we understand that the water has already broken how can we understand that the dilating is in process in the baby's head the crown is coming how do we know here's how we know not according to any pastor I'm a pastor myself love it I, I not according to anyone else on this earth pastor or not or biblical scholar theologian uh, astronomist not astrology astronomist God did astronomy the devil did astrology he always has to copy everything that the Lord does and make it look really close to it's a counterfeit he's a counterfeit here is how we know the water broke here is how we know the dilating is a process First of all, the Lord said, as in the days of Noah, so shall it be when the Son of Man comes. That is in Luke chapter 21 and Matthew chapter 24. 
What do you think of when it's in the days of Noah? A flood! Gracious me. Flooding, flooding, flooding. When Hurricane, I believe it was Harvey, came in and flooded Texas in the United States, the Lord woke me up and said, look at the weather. And I thought, hmm, what's going to happen? I didn't know. But he wanted me to look at the whole earth. And I looked at the whole earth, and sure enough, Naples and India were up to their necks in water. 2,000-some people died. But it, it never made the news. For what reason, I don't know. But it was still a fact, as in the days of Noah. So in America, I believe somewhere between 60 and 70 people passed away in that particular hurricane. And over in Naples and in India, 2,000. And the flooding was much worse. So it wasn't just happening in the United States. And then, of course, we know Irma, Hurricane Irma came and pretty much wiped out a lot of Florida. More floods went into Georgia, went into South Carolina, North Carolina. And then they have, you know, two other hurricanes. I forgot. I think it's Jose and Jose and uh, Max. Uh, then the earthquake, 8.1 earthquake, major earthquake happened in Mexico. One sign after another. This is what Jesus said would happen. And we could say, oh, whatever, Dr. Hope, there's been floods before. There's been hurricanes before. There has been earthquakes before. You're right. But to this magnitude, no. It's as if God is screaming to try to get our attention. But it's not just so much to get our attention. It's the timing of it. What do I mean by that? The timing is these are all happening, approaching the holy days and the high holy days. Messiah, the Son of God, does not do anything significant regarding his life and purpose on this earth and in heaven unless it's on the high holy days. Passover was the Passover. He was the lamb that died on the cross. The Moses told them Moses told them to put the, the blood across the doorpost so the death angel would pass over. When we say every verbally say every day, I apply the blood of Jesus, the death angel of whatever has to pass over our life, whether it's the death angel of your marriage, the death angel of your finances, the death angel of your future, the death angel of your career, the death angel of your uh, your house, your car, whatever. We verbally apply the blood of Jesus over all that we have every day and the death angel has to pass over because we're covered with the protecting innocent blood of Jesus Christ can't touch it okay so now I'm going to give the list and every one of these are in the Word of God and they're this is what's the amazing part they're happening on holy days they're happening just before holy days. They're happening just as Yeshua HaMashiach said. He said, before the great and terrible day of our Lord, this will happen, this will happen, this will happen, this will happen, right before, then you know I'm coming. Get ready, how, do you, how does he want us to get ready? He said, count, pray that you count yourself worthy, excuse me, pray that you are counted worthy. Who counts you worthy? Jesus Christ counts you worthy, period. Not your neighbor, not your boss, not your spouse, not your pastor. Jesus Christ counts you worthy. Holy smokes. That means you better be reading your Bible. That means you better be praying. That means you better be worshiping. You better be spending a lot of time with God right now. To be counted worthy enough to take, to make the rapture and to be taken in the rapture by Yeshua HaMashiach. Oh, goodness. Okay, here it is. As in the days of Noah and Lot. Why would he mention Lot? Huh. What do you think of when you think of Lot? Sodom and Gomorrah, same-sex marriage. Okay, two and a half years ago in America and around the world, we could not be considered a same-sex world or nation because it had not been legalized yet. It is now legalized. It's been legalized for two years. So prior to two years, the rapture could not have happened. Now it can, because everything is legal now. 
and it is considered okay to man with man, female with female. God burned Sodom and Gomorrah. What do you think he's going to do to every, every place else? Burn it. He said there will be floods. There will be, as in the days of Lot, same-sex marriage. There will be signs in the sun, August 21st, 2017. Signs in the moon, August 21st, 2017. Also, the moon is the four red blood moons, the tetrad of moons. The, the two happened in 2014 and two happened in 2015. When did they happen? Exactly on the feast, the holy days. Scary. Not a day before, not a day after. Exactly on the holy days, the red blood moons took place. Oh, then he says there'll be signs in the stars. Hmm. For the last two years, there has been two suns in the heavens. Two suns, a real sun that God put there, and then this planet X, which they call a star as well, because it is a planet. It's big enough to be a planet, and it's actually four times the size of Jupiter, has a great big long tail of debris, and is flying through the universe every 36,000 uh, years. Excuse me, 3,600 years. 36,000 years, I believe they said. I could be corrected on that. But what I'm thinking of is a 36. Why 36? Three sixes. Six, six, six. Everything that symbolizes Satan will represent his number in one way or another. Yes. So. Maybe it's not 36,000. Maybe it's more. But I do know it's 36 something. And I'll look that up to verify that. Correct me on that one, and I'll put it on the put it on the screen. Uh, what, what the correct number is now? Um, the stars: Nibiru, Planet X, aka the Red Dragon, spoken of in Revelation chapter twelve, verse one, two, three, four, and five. This is not made up stuff. This is in the Bible. This is what's scary. The water has broken, whether we like it or not. The, the dilating is taking place whether we like it or not whether it's good timing we have things to do we have this plan that plan this this all this stuff needs to take place yet in our life we don't want the rapture to happen because 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 well that's okay if that's how you feel you'll be left behind and you can attempt to fulfill your future during the tribulation yeah right the only way you'll be able to do that is if you take the microchip which is the mark of the beast, and you'll be able to access your bank account. And when you access your bank account, you'll be able to fulfill whatever dreams are possible while martial law and all hell breaks loose on this earth. There is no fresh water. There will be no oceans and no creeks and no streams and no rivers and no lakes left. They'll all be red with blood. There will be no green trees, green grass, crops. They'll all be dried up. There will be no wind and breeze. There will be horrible locusts that will bite men and bite them so much that the people will beg to die. Um, boils on them. The plagues are called the seven plagues. or They come from the, the, the uh, seals in heaven and the bowls. The bowl of wrath. The wrath, you know, just... You, the wrath of God, which is going to be poured out on the earth for all those that would not read their Bible and simply do things God's way, which is the best way, the right way. So the wrath is what we get to avoid the tribulation, the pre-tribulation saints. Okay, the pre-trib means before the rapture happens. Where does it say that again? Revelation 3.10. For all those who faithfully overcome, I will keep you from the wrath to come upon the earth. Hmm. That means we're out of here. And that explains it again in 1 Corinthians 15, 52, as well as 1 Thessalonians 4, 16 through 18, and so on, and so on, and so on. But those are the general ones. Okay, so let's get back to the stars. Also September 23rd, which is the big hoopty. I love it. I love it. When God screams from the, from the, from the, from the plant, I mean, Okay, people can say, well, not everyone has heard the gospel, and this hasn't happened yet, and that hasn't happened. Hey, listen, when God wants to get our attention, he'll do it so the whole world can see it. So even if they don't have television to watch Christian TV, even if they don't have a missionary in their town, even if they don't have internet, 
The whole world will see what's happening in the heavens. And the Lord will let somebody tell them, this is written in the book of Revelation, chapter 1, 2, 3, chapter 12, chapter 12, verses 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5. So people will know, God is talking to me, period. Time to listen. Okay, so the stars is when Virgo, the virgin, representing Israel, also representing a pregnant woman, which is Mother Mary, Virgo, Virgin Mary. She's pregnant with child. Who's the child? King Jupiter, King Planet Jupiter. King Planet Jupiter already passed through her womb and did the same thing when Jesus was born. This is what the star in the sky was, part of the stars in the sky. There was three planets that lined up and Jupiter was one of them. What my point is, is that, is that, uh, Jupiter was one of the signs, I should say, that they were looking for. Jupiter's passing through again. Jesus doesn't have to be passing through that again because he already went through it once. But we have to. Why does Jupiter represent the church? Because we have already married Jesus in our hearts. Therefore, we took on his last name as a husband gives his last name to his bride. Christ gave his last name to us Christians. Therefore, us Christians are the ones passing through Virgo's birth canal right now as we speak. Who's there waiting? The red dragon. That NASA put a big black piece of tape across so no one could see it because they didn't want everybody to know the truth. But before they covered it up, there's pictures all over the internet, including I have several of them that show what, the, what it really looks like. And if you can put on your glasses, you will see the, you will see the red dragon. You can see his mouth, his eyes, his nose, huge nostrils, and you can see his tail. And it works, this red dragon, it stays on planet Mebru. That's its hangout base. That's where it, that's, that's its home. And it's the devil. I'm telling you, it's exactly like Revelation 12 says. It says the devil wants to stop us from going into heaven. So he's waiting at the base of the woman to catch the child when it comes out we are the child and instead Michael comes down and fights and the red dragon and all of his evil demons are thrown to earth while we go up to heaven so everyone left on earth that misses the rapture will have to deal with all the demons that have been hanging out and the planets all these years holy smokes ah not good Okay, so the stars, signs in the stars, yes. Earthquakes, have we had earthquakes? Yes, the late, the earliest one I believe was September the 8th. I think it was September the 8th, I'm not sure. But that was when um, 8.1 took place in Mexico. Okay, tsunamis, has there been tsunamis? Yes, as a matter of fact, they're forecasting more to come uh, in the next couple of weeks with the next two hurricanes that are coming. Then... Uh, another sign, of course, I already explained it to you, is the red dragon in the sky. The red dragon is, it said, then there appeared another sign in the sky. The Apostle John wrote this. And who would think that in September of the year 2017, the book of Revelation would come to pass for the first time in history. Period. It's never happened before. Okay. Then Jesus also said there will be wars and rumors of wars. Hmm. Well, there was World War One, there was World War Two, there was the Korean War, the Vietnam War. How many wars? Even the Civil War. Oh, and how many wars in all the other countries fighting and fighting amongst themselves? And now North Korea. Uh, at this time, and when I'm making this video, North Korea wants to uh, has been has threatened three countries. I believe it was Japan, South Korea, and of course the USA. So, uh, wars and rumors of wars, period. Okay, that's another sign. Um, nation against nation. The Bible says, Jesus said, Matthew chapter 24 and Luke chapter 21, nation will rise against nation. Nation means what? People. When you see the word nation in Hebrew, it means people. People will rise against people. Okay, let me put it in just the American terminology. Democrats against Republicans. Fighting for ridiculous, ridiculous uh, issues. But you know what? It's a spiritual battle because when people stand up for abortion, they stand up for uh, 
same-sex marriage. They stand up for transgender. They stand up for uh, things that are so immoral and against holiness. Of course, there's going to be a battle of nation against nation. Okay, that's another sign. Famines. Ah, famines. Do you know how many places on this earth right now are dry to the bone, famines, fam famished, famished, 42 places, famished on this earth, all over the earth, pestilence, okay, and uh, let's see, here we go, pestilence, uh, how about SARS, remember the disease stars, how about the Ebola uh, in Africa, SARS in the Oriental countries, they were in the invisible killer, they called them, where they couldn't, you know, they could figure out it's all the pestilence that Jesus is speaking about in the Word of God. Okay. By the way, pestilence overcomable with Psalms 91. Yes. We do not fear the terror by night, nor the arrow that flies by day, nor the deadly thing that stalks in darkness, or the plague that destroys at noonday. Pestilence. For a thousand fall at our left, saying, and tout ten thousand on the right hand, but no harm will come near us. I'm telling you, when you know the Word of God, them demons will run from you. You won't be running from them. They will run from you because they know you, you, they know you have more power in your tongue than they have in their entire being. And that tongue must speak the word of God. Powerful, positive, punching, two-edged sword, word of God. Next sign. Um, let me see. Fruitful sights. Oh, yes. Fearful sights. Okay. I'm reading my writing here. The Bible said there will be fearful signs and sights in the heavens. Fearful signs and sights. Hmm. Now, this doesn't... He's. He, we've already touched on the red dragon, so we don't need to go there again. We've already touched on the stars lining up, the 12 stars above Virgo's head, three planets and nine... nine even though there's more than 12 stars above... Leo above uh, Virgo's head and there's usually nine constellations there's nine big stars okay and then there's a few little ones but the trace the drawing that God put there is nine stars and then there's three extra planets so okay so here we have fearful signs and signs. what are people seeing lately in the heavens that shakes them up and that has been shaking them up for years UFOs UFOs. What was that? People are looking, filming. What was that? Oh, what was that? Oh, this one's shaped in a triangle. That one's spinning around. That one just disappeared. This one flew right in front of me. Fearful signs and sights in the heavens. UFOs. Okay. Next sign. Um, persecuting Christians, martyrs. It says many will die for Christ. I just received a personal text from my friends in Burma across the world saying that parents are being dragged in front of their children and beheaded because they will not give in to become Muslim and their children are watching this I couldn't believe what I heard thinking the faith of those parents to not give in knowing that their children would be in the hands of these mass murderers only by the grace of God their eyes must have been opened to see heavenly angels standing there. Oh my goodness, can you imagine? That's been happening for a very long time. Okay, family will betray you. The Bible says even your own family will betray you. Well, how often does that happen? Hmm, I think it's been happening for a long time, but it's really become worse now because it's good against evil, Christian against non-Christian, period. Or fake Christian against real Christian, period. Family betrayal. It's another sign that the rapture is happening. Okay. Outside of martyrism, persecuting the Christians, throwing them in prison, and violating their rights, basically, because they are Christian. Another sign. These are all in Luke chapter 21 and Matthew chapter 24. And in Corinthians and 2 Thessalonians 2, I believe. I'll look that one up. Okay. 
Another sign, are you ready for this? Hate for Jerusalem. Excuse me, anti-Semitic? How many people on this earth hate the Jews? How often, including Hitler, but I'm talking about today, in the year 2017, come on. Hate for Jerusalem, this is what's in the word of God that's supposed to happen before the rapture. Okay. It also says that men will, will uh, their hearts will, will fail them. They'll have a heart attack because of the fears that are attempted to come on the earth. Well, a lot of people love their possessions and their possessions become their idol and they don't even realize it. And they put it before God, before Bible reading, before everything else, money and possessions and fame as well too, by the way. So when those three overtake someone and they realize that their foundations are being shaked, their health is affected. That's in the Bible. Okay, another sign is said the heavens will be shaken. Wow. Well, the heavens are being shaken right now. If you take a look at the oceans and the beaches, the water is being sucked way up because of this planet coming and it's a magnet and it's sucking. The beaches are disappearing. And in some of them, like right after the hurricane, the water went way out. You could walk out on the ocean for a long way. Um, and it's and it's happening in California where uh, they had to ship in more sand because it, it was just crazy because of the magnet, the magnet uh, of this planet X pulling towards the earth. Okay, when the heavens shake, that means the asteroids fall. A meteorolo- a meteorite fell yesterday. So a lot more asteroids are going to be fall, and they're headed towards the earth right now. This is what we were told from August the 21st to the end of October. Expect hurricanes, expect tsunamis, expect earthquakes, and expect all kinds of small, medium, and large asteroids to hit the earth because of what this planet is 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 swinging it has its tail it's swinging back and forth and it's tossing 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 towards the earth okay next sign i already mentioned a little bit about it is the uh, planet x called wormwood the bible calls him wormwood so we're going to call it by the title god gave it wormwood odd that it's called wormwood why it's the exact same color of wormwood. If you look at it, uh, it's not a it's not a beautiful, bright, pretty, pretty um, uh, planet by any means. It's dead. Satan lives on a dead planet. It, it, death and darkness, everything that he represents. It's a dead planet. They call it a brown glob. Um, brownish blurry everything's blurry just like the devil's got everything everything's confusing with him so it's blurry this thing stops and goes and stops and goes and stops and goes so this is why the government cannot tell you exactly when it expects to throw the rest of the asteroids into the earth because it's it goes very fast for a short period of time and then it stops and then it goes again it it breaks all rules of the solar system and this is why they're building 310 tunnels or have built built 310 homes and tunnels underground for the elite and the wealthy so they can hide out because they know it's happening and they're leaving the rest of society to you know at the fate but we know i don't care how fancy their 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 wine cellar is or their tunnels or their homes underground God will crack right to him. He'll have he'll have the walls crack with these earthquakes. These tremendous earthquakes will call, and all the water will come right in on them. Watch. You can't run and hide from God. You cannot run and hide from God, and that's what they're trying to do. Okay. So Planet X is shaking the heaven, and it's called Wormwood. That's another sign. Here's another sign. Fig tree. He says when the fig tree blooms know that summer is near so is the son of man when you see all these things happening know that the son of man is near okay the fig tree had not bloomed and had been dead all these years until 1947 on the feast of trumpets when israel 
first became a nation. The paperwork was completed in 1948, but it was started and accepted in 1947, the same year that the fig tree started to bloom. From 1940, here's another sign, from 1947 to 2017 is seven zero, 70 years. Why is that significant? Back in Genesis, God said, I will not contend, contend with men forever, but I will let them live only 120 years. We, a year, by the way, it, it describes a generation being 70 years, a little bit over 70, whatever, somewhere between 70 and 80, but 70 is the number of a quote unquote generation. Okay, so that generation Jesus was speaking, that generation that sees the fig tree bloom will not pass away until the rapture happens, will not pass away until the tribulation happens, will not pass away until everything that he spoke of in Matthew 24 and Luke 21 comes to pass. We, you listening, and everyone listening, we are this generation. Okay, because the fig tree is blooming, that's another sign. The 70 years were the last generation. We're also the 120th Jubilee from the beginning when that was spoken. If you add up the 50 year Jubilees according to the Hebrew calendar, which is God is a Hebrew, Jesus is a Hebrew, and we therefore we need to go and respect, go by the Hebrew calendar. Yes, we can go by the Gregorian because that's what we have to function with every day, but the Hebrew calendar is actually what matters to God. It's on his time clock, not ours. 50 year Jubilee, 2017 is our 50 year Jubilee. It's also the end of our seven years. Every seven years, something happens every seven years. So we are saying if the rapture doesn't happen, September, 2017, that means we have another seven years on this earth because we know every seven years something significant takes place because God's numbers are three and seven and every time he talks about time 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 it has a seven attached to it so 1947 2017 ah, um, 1967 is the six day war when God's angels came down and fought for Israel, when all the other countries rose up against her and she was going to, she had the Lord not stepped in. Yes. He used the United States majorly, but the angels of the Lord actually stood there. I have it in my, in my tapes and my videos. You'll see them on my, on my classes, on the YouTube channels where I played the six day war, the four blood moon, six day war for my classes to see. They absolutely loved it. And the Arabs are the ones that are saying, I'm sorry, but uh, you have a God that watches out for you because angels were all over. They froze their hands. They froze the enemy's hands. They froze the enemy's guns. They froze their tongues. They froze their bodies. They could not move. And the Israelites, of course, were, were astonished what's going on. And when they finally were able to speak, they said, you're, you, you have a God on your side. So they, they, they gave in and uh, Israel won the war and they got a portion of their land back. Okay, next sign. Are you ready for this one? Ah, there will be many offenses. Ah, oh, please. Have you seen Twitter and Facebook and um, the news lately where they call it a public war or a Twitter attack or um, I mean, publicly bold Hollywood stars, businessmen, businesswomen, they're attacking each other. Democrats and Republicans attacking each other verbally, publicly, uh, disgraceful offenses, 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 offenses all over. Jesus said the earth will be loaded with offenses. Let me tell you something. If you can't let go of the offense, you won't make the rapture. Offense invites the devil in to create problems and it puts a weight on you, a concern on you. So we need to let go, forgive. Yes, God will deal with our battles, 
Yes, we still have to fight in the best we can, but we realize it's not the person, it's the demon behind it. So we have to go after the demon through the word of God. The devil hates it when you speak God's word. He hates it when you pray God's word. He hates it when you sing God's word. He runs from you, remember. So this is how you deal with it. Okay, your offenses. Let them roll off your back. When you are, when you have the whole armor of God on you and you're filled with the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit represents oil. You can't stick anything to oil. Uh, things slide off. They fall off. And this is why it's important to read your Bible every day so that oil of the Holy Spirit covers your mind, your soul, your spirit, and offenses do not stick to you. Okay. There's other ones that says lovers of themselves to Timothy. They will be lovers of themselves. Oh my goodness. How many people on this earth have the Jezebel spirit, the pride spirit, even in the ministries, uh, competing with each other, lovers of themselves. And then they say there will be no love at all. Cold. uh, Your uh, people's hearts will grow cold, wax cold. Ah, are you kidding? There's riots. There's, um, cop killers. There's cops killing people. I mean, it goes both ways. Neither one are right. Come on, lay the weapons down and love one another, period. Or get delivered. Get the devil off your back so you don't have a problem. Okay, that one's another one. These are all in in these two chapters. And oh, and then 2 Timothy as well too. Lawlessness. Hello? Lawlessness. Are you kidding? Lawlessness is everywhere. People not respecting the law, ignoring authority, and thinking they can do what they want. And what what was not approved a year ago is approved now. Everything's become more liberal. Lawlessness. Okay, next one. Next sign, false prophets. How many false prophets are out there? Now, he didn't say they all had to be Christian false prophets. He just said false prophets in general. There's false prophets in every religion, every culture, every country out there. How do you know what a false prophet is? They want you to give the attention to them. They want you to remember and honor and elevate them. And they will tell you what you want to hear rather than tell you the truth. False prophets are man pleasers, not God pleasers. False prophets are Jezebel spirit, prideful spirit, and lovers of themselves. False prophets are, I'm going to come right out and say this. I believe the um, false prophet of the last days that's going to hang out with the Antichrist is the Pope. There's a whole study on that that I won't get into on here, but it talks about the previous pope in the Bible and how he uh, he exited office without being asked to or without conflict. That's what the Bible says. And then a new leader took place, which was praise beyond uh, imagination, and he joined the Antichrist. So what happened to the last pope and what happened to this pope lines up with the Bible, which tells us that this pope is the one that will join hands with the Antichrist. Very liberal. If I do remember right, I remember the Pope saying once he became in office that there is more than one way to God. There's more than one way to heaven. And it's not just through Jesus Christ. Well, (laughs) hello, that's a lie. I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man comes to the Father except by Jesus Christ. Isn't that not what he said? So the Pope denied the Bible, called it a lie. Okay, man pleaser, not God pleaser. Okay, on to the next. Um, Let's see. Oh, Jesus was talking about when the rapture happens and before the rapture happens, pray that you are not in flight. Flight. Now, flight literally means two things, like an airplane flight, and it also means trip in Hebrew. So how many airplanes have gone down in the last, let's just say, two, three, four years? Just in, just in that period of time. A lot. A lot. Jesus predicted, pray that you're not flying on the Sabbath. 
God is a God of order. He doesn't want you running around doing your own business on his day. Set aside one day to honor God. You get six of them. Okay. Airplane accidents. Okay. There is the final one that I can uh, boldly say as a blood Jew myself from the tribe of Judah that the most important thing about all these things happening is the timing. And the timing is the Feast of Trumpets, Rosh Hashanah, beginning September 21, 22, 23, and 24 of 2017. Here's the significance of it. Here's another sign, by the way. We are currently in, we Jews are currently in the year 5777. Gregorian is 2017, both ending in 7. 777 means that's it, done, over, completed. No, the 5 before it means grace. This has been our season of grace. Okay, 5777. Now, 5778 begins on September 21st. 8 means supernatural new beginning. Therefore, it could very easily be that the period of grace is over and a supernatural new beginning begins. Okay, 777 has not approached and not been on the Jewish calendar all this time until now. Okay, but here's another exciting part. September 23rd, when the sun appears at her shoulder, moon at her feet, 12 stars above her head, Jupiter coming out her, her birth canal, the dragon is waiting at the birth canal, it's all in the heavens, whether, even if it wasn't written in the Bible, this is all happening in the heavens. Even if it was not written in the Bible, what I just spoke is happening in astronomy. You could look through your, your, your infrared glasses and see Nibiru, see the red dragon. You can see the two suns sitting right next to each other. Two years ago, they were east to west apart. The thing traveled so fast, it's now like a deviled egg sitting right next to, sitting right next to uh, um, the sun. The sun, these, this Nibiru planet will pass in front of the sun over Israel for three hours on September 23rd and cause Israel to be dark. God is trying to get his people, his people, to do things his way, God's way, not their way. Okay. So now... Rosh Hashanah is the fifth, number five again, Grace, the fifth feast out of seven. The first four spring feasts represent Jesus' first coming, Passover, unleavened bread, were the days that he was in the, in, the, in, the, in the tomb, but actually he was in hell. He was unleavened, no pride. Leavened means pride, unleavened means no pride. He went to hell, so you and I did not have to. He took on our sins, so we didn't have to go to hell. That innocent man, oh gracious, wait till you meet him. Ah, he came out, I hate using the word Easter because Easter is not the right word. It is called first fruits. He came out on first fruits walked around the earth for 40 days, visited his disciples three times, shown all the saints of old all over Jerusalem and just had a blast and then ascended into heaven. 10 days after that, the Holy Spirit comes down and he passes the baton to the Holy Spirit. 10 days after that in the upper room, Acts chapter two takes place and that is called the Feast of Pentecost. And that's when the Holy Spirit, Pente means 50 and the uh, Holy Spirit came down and that's when the speaking in tongues began. Ooh, I love it. So the, that is what takes place on the four spring feasts. They've already been fulfilled. That was Jesus' first coming. Then there's a time, a break. And this is what we've been living in, and this is break period. Now the time comes for the last three feasts to be fulfilled. 
the final three feasts to be fulfilled. And it is the Feast of Trumpets, Rosh Hashanah, the blowing of the trumpets. Jesus said in 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, when the last trump sounds, that we blow the trumpet 100 times every day. Four different types of sounds. And I will get into that later. Well, I, I could get into it now, but there is the first trump that is a, I'll just, I'll just sound it for you. And then the next one is three sounds of like wailing and crying. The first one means gathering together, awakening. Second one means let's get together and repent. And you start crying and awakening. God, forgive me of all the sins, all my words, thoughts, and deeds that I did wrong in your sight. Please forgive me. Okay. And then there's a blast of nine. That's what that one sounds like. Nine represents the Holy Spirit. Okay. And that is when we gather together to, um, after we repent, we gather together pre preparation for leaving earth. So we have gathering together, repentance, preparation for leaving earth. And we assemble together and join together now as one. Now that we've repented, that's what the nine is, okay? When there is no competition, no jealousy, no st stabbing each other in the back, no stealing, no lying, no cheating. And you're joined together because the nine, the Holy Spirit has come upon you. Let me give you a little biblical story on that. John and Peter, opposite personalities, hated each other when Jesus was on the earth fought with each other all the time. Who's going to sit at your right hand? John was very lackadaisative and loving, and Peter's very tough and bold. And after Jesus ascended, those two disciples who hated each other, after they went to the upper room and Acts chapter 2 came on them and they started speaking in tongues, those two brothers became best friends and hung out together preaching the gospel all the time. It was those two opposite people. Now that they have the Holy Spirit, they no longer have all that competition and jealousy and pride that the church has today. And they got together and they were the ones that said to the man begging at the temple gates, silver and gold have I none, but such as I have, I give to you. Now get up and walk. Had those two not set aside their earthly offenses, the Holy Spirit would have never been able to work boldly in their life. Hmm? Yes, and while we are talking about the trumpet blast during the Feast of Trumpets, also called Rosh Hashanah, it has other names as well too, uh, but the two main names are Feast of Trumpets and Rosh Hashanah. During the trumpet blast, they are blown 100 times, and each, uh, each blast is a certain blast symbolizing something, and it has a certain sound. And just briefly, I'd like to go over those. Um, as a matter of fact, they're found, um, the Feast of Trumpets and the celebration of Feast of Trumpets, the celebration of Rosh Hashanah, and when it should begin is actually found in Leviticus chapter 23. It's spelled out there. Fascinating, very fascinating chapter. Leviticus 23, I find, is such a rich chapter to show the power of God. 23 also means the power of God. And I find it interesting how the signs in the heaven are taking place on September the 23rd. So 23 stands out there uh, three times in a row. Okay, uh, but I do want to get to the, I explained the first three blasts. The first one was a, um, a, a sound, a what they call a tekiya, T-E-K-I-A-H, and it's called a blast. And it's basically blowing it just to get everybody together. Uh, the second one is the three sounds of, of brokenness. Um, kind of like a, a, a goat or a sheep that's crying or a person that's weeping for repentance. That literally means repentance. That sound means repentance. The third sound is the alarm. And again, that's the nine, the nine uh, noises that uh, I made earlier. Um, my, I have several people in my church that blow 
the part of my congregation that are able to blow the trumpets, let alone the, sh I mean, as well as the shofar horn. Usually if you can blow a trumpet or a, uh, or a cornet, you can surely blow the shofar horns, short ones and long ones. I have both. They're both in the goat family, um, but the short one is literally considered the very first one, and it is from the goat, and it is the shofar horn. This is what they blow, and this is what they blew back in the holy days, back in the biblical days, and that's why it makes it a holy item, because it was symbolized by God to be used for his glory and for uh, our awakening. So it's not to be used or uh, just blown, just to, you know, just as just for it's like taking the Lord's name in vain we just don't blow this thing because there's a purpose behind blowing it there's a reason behind it and God hears it when we blow it so it better be for the right reason okay that third sound again is the nine um, it's an alarm it's like your nine go your alarm going off nine times really fast that like type that type of thing except it's through the horn now the last blast is what Jesus spoke of, what Paul spoke of, what Revelation speaks of, what Daniel spoke of, all the prophets of old and the prophets in uh, the New Testament, the Old Testament, New Testament, they were speaking about the last trumpet. 1 Thessalonians chapter 4 is the key one. Uh, verse 16, verse 17, verse 18, when the last trumpet sounds, the dead in Christ will rise first. And those that are alive and remain shall be caught up to meet our Lord in the air. And so shall we ever be with our Lord. That trumpet is this one that I'm about to explain. It's the fourth and final blast. And it's called Tekia Hagula. Hagu, and it may be pronounced uh, a little bit different. But H-A-G-A-D-O-L-A-H. -A -A and remember in Hebrew when you see A-H... Uh, or the A at the end, or the H in the beginning, like Hallelujah, or Yeshua, A H, or Torah. That is that Ah, that breath means the power of the Holy Spirit, or the breath of the Holy Spirit, or the power of God. So when there is that Ah, and that A H, or in this case, Hagudula is always expressed with a breath of power in the beginning and at the end, for I am the beginning and the end. Mm. God is amazing. And when we put the pieces to the puzzle together, it makes more and more sense all the time. Okay, so we have the Tequila Hagudula, and that is the same blast as the very first one. It does a full circle. God completes it, a full circle. It go, he goes back to the first blast. After they gathered together, they repented, they were alarmed for what? Why are they alarmed? It is to prepare for leaving earth, literally. It is to prepare for the year to come, literally. Whatever, which one, it may be prepare for the rapture or prepare to what is to take place prior to the rapture. And then the Tekia Hagula. That is the last trump, and that is when the same trumpet sound is blown as the beginning, except this one, they hold their breath as long as they can. It's fabulous. So it's once they're done blowing that blast, and he said when the last trumpet sounds, so we don't know which um, you know, Jew, Messianic Jew, that is blowing these trumpets, we don't know which part of the earth this is going to be considered. Is it in Israel that he's considering the last trump? Is it in America? And I find it interesting how USA, United States of America, is centered directly in the center of the word Jerusalem. J-E-R-U-S-A-L-A-M. Shalom. Jerusalem. Jerusalem. And we are centered because there are so many Jews uh, in America, so many Messianic Jews as well as um, uh, Judaism, as well as non Messianic Jews, if you will. So, all of us blow the trumpet because we all celebrate it. So, when we celebrate this feast, who blows the last trumpet? We don't know. What continent, what time frame, what time zone? We don't know. Only God knows. And this is the exciting part where we know the season 
we know the year because of the signs that are happening and we anticipate the day and the hour because we do not know the day or the hour okay and the reason there's multiple reasons for that first of all God wants us to live a holy life uh, all the time not just five minutes before the rapture happens not only that he doesn't want the devil to know his secrets you never throw your pearls before swine and the red dragon is already in the sky spotted with the natural eye uh, it's all over the YouTube and I have it playing at my church as well as um, I take it around to wherever I meet people and I show them this is real stuff the red dragon is visible when the eclipse happened you can see it as clear as day you can see his eyes his nose his mouth his nostrils and he was right there right there watching the eclipse happen the Bible says it in Revelation chapter 12 verse 1 2 3 4 and 5 that the red dragon would be waiting for the Saints to come out of the earth and go to heaven and he wants to capture us and he will not be able to so on that note this is another reason why the day and the hour that we are raptured is not a uh, fact to in the Bible it's not a fact and it, he, God doesn't want us to know because of the two reasons for our heart's sake so he can test us right to the last minute and so the devil does not have plans of our Lord in his in his pocket to try to cause more trouble he God knows what he's doing he's his ways are higher than ours his thoughts are higher than ours thank goodness okay now real quickly that I just wanted to touch on those um, someone had mentioned that during the tribulation what happens to those awesome Saints now I have another video that as a matter of fact I did last year in 2016 when the beginning of 5777 took place and we Jews were not sure if the Messiah was going to come back uh, which is Jesus Christ our Messiah our risen Messiah but if he was going to come back at the beginning of 5777 or at the end of 5777 so we were prepared back then and now we know okay it could happen this year and if it doesn't happen this year it may be seven more years before it happens because God does things in increments of seven hence the seven-year tribulation so we are praying to God that the rapture takes place now so we do not have to suffer through seven more years of this earth getting worse and worse and worse with the martyrisms with the uh, same-sex marriages with the transvestites with the um, uh, hatred that people have towards each other from just just out of out of you know we know it's the, we know it's the spiritual welfare the demons against the angels the Holy Spirit against the, uh, the 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 principalities and powers and rulers of the darkness we know that but for the people to boldly embrace demonic activity and when they're even told you need deliverance and they refuse it then we have no choice but to fight the enemy we have no choice but to accept the fact that they don't want help they don't want Jesus Christ they don't want the Bible and therefore we have to separate ourselves from them and take the narrow path to heaven instead of the wide road to hell so a lot of the tribulation Saints are going to become radical Christians like Paul the Apostle because they know they missed the rapture and they should not have so they will be called a lot of them will be called domestic terrorists and they will be thrown in prison simply because they don't agree with same-sex marriage simply because they perhaps voted for Trump simply because they are against abortion uh, simply because they read their Bible or they believe that Jesus is the Son of God numerous reasons and they are gonna call them haters and they're gonna say that they're a domestic terrorist and therefore their martial law will legally be able to throw them in prison for the rest of their lives and they'll be tortured in prison tortured to try to take the mark of the beast They'll, that the devil will try to get as many people to take that microchip the mark of the beast as possible and you know parents right now are being slaughtered in front of their children knowing that their children are being left in the hands of mass murderers that believe um, Jesus is not the Messiah that takes a lot of faith I hope that the Christians that are being murdered right now because of their faith in Jesus Christ that they the Lord opened their eyes their spiritual eyes and let them see the angels around protecting their children so they could make heaven and therefore their children know Jesus is worth dying for um, I pray for those children and the parents that are up against the wall having to make 
the most difficult decisions of their life. Oh, good God Almighty. Come, Lord Jesus, come. Come, Lord Jesus, come. Okay, uh, real quickly, the last thing I wanted to touch on that they had asked me, I have re- received so many emails to say, Dr. Hope, please explain what happens to the tribulation saints, um, you know, immediately after and pretty much an outline. Go to my video called What Happens If You Miss the Rapture? And it's right there. It's on, as a matter of fact, it's on three of my five YouTube channels. I wish everything was on one page, but unfortunately we had several people helping us and they ended up on five different channels. That's okay. Five different channels can reach, you know, 500 more people. Who knows? Who Five million more people. But um, my goal is to get as many people into heaven as possible. Even if I'm sitting in heaven at the marriage supper of the lamb with my master Jesus Christ my YouTube videos and salvation videos and healing and deliverance videos and rapture and tribulation videos can help somebody not take the microchip can help somebody learn to read their Bible can help somebody appreciate uh, the life that God gave them and therefore take the ultimate sacrifice refuse to take the world one world order microchip and simply die for Christ Uh, It's not going to be easy, but die for Christ so you don't end up in hell. So perhaps I could be a part of it and get a few people more into heaven, Uh, whether it's one or whether it's 10 million into heaven uh, through these videos and YouTube videos and everything that we have that help to help get as many people into heaven as possible. So to answer that question briefly, without having to go to the other video, what takes place with the tribulation saints? Um immediately everyone will join together because I believe one third or less of the earth will be missing the innocent animals the innocent children and all the people that truly were held worthy that's the key Luke 21 36 is the key verse it's almost scary Jesus said it himself pray pray that you are found worthy to escape To escape the wrath to come and to see the Son of Man. In other words, pray that you are found worthy to make the rapture and ultimately uh, spend your eternity with Jesus Christ. That is key. We must have all hidden sin out of our life. Hidden sin omission sins, commission sins, words, thoughts, and deeds that are wrong in God's sight must be obliviated. Everybody has sin. And if anyone says, well, not me, somebody else, well, you have pride, so you might as well just sit down because you're not going to make the rapture. And then you'll have a choice to make. Everyone, to answer the questions of those that have sent email after email telling me, I need to know what happens to those um, that miss the rapture. What can we tell them now in case they miss it? Because everybody has loved ones and family that are not 100% filled. What are the requirements to make the rapture? You have to be filled with the Holy Spirit. Not half full. Not a quarter full. Filled with the Holy Spirit. Matthew chapter 25 says, The Christians that were half filled with the Holy Spirit missed the rapture. The ones that were filled. How do you get filled with the Holy Spirit? Read your Bible. Read your Bible. Read your Bible. Read your Bible. Every time you read your Bible, you're filling up that gas tank. Every time you obey your Bible, you're filling up that gas tank. Every time you walk away from sin, you're filling up that gas tank. Every fill, every time you worship a worship song, you fill up your gas tank. Amen? Okay. So, those tribulation saints must know that they were either a quarter full half full or no full of the of the holy spirit therefore they need to dive into the word of god there's going to be many churches all over this earth and the 144,000 male jews and the two witnesses will replace the holy spirit on this earth to help as many tribulation saints die for christ as possible and make it to heaven okay now um They, the the main thing they need to do is come to the, come to the, uh, 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 come to the fact that their food is going to run out. Their gasoline is going to run out. uh, The water is all going to turn to blood all over this earth. So you will have nothing to drink. 
and the quicker you give in the better yes you may be tortured in prison and you will eventually get your head cut off but please I urge all of you oh God Almighty may the Holy Spirit power that is imparted into the 144,000 as well as the two witnesses. May that power that they carry be so... Uh, um, it, may it impact these the lives and the minds and the souls of these tribulation saints so much that they will undoubtedly and boldly have the greatest revival in their mind and in their family and in their group and in everybody they can affect to never give in to the One World Order microchip Mark of the Beast 666 system. So, they've already enforced it. They're enforcing it in Mexico. As a matter of fact, they are killing people that refuse to take it. And it's a new thing, as of, I believe, as of 2016 and 17, uh, that they're asking people are not asking, they're forcing certain individuals in Mexico to take the microchip. And if you don't, you're dead. It's that simple. So I'm sure it's happening in other countries and not Mexico, but this will not be a new thing. They already have it in newborn babies. They already have it in animals. And it's not of God. There will be no microchip in myself or my loved ones, period. Period. We will make the rapture. We will make the rapture. We're planning on it. We're planning on it. Luke chapter 25 excuse me Luke chapter 21 verse 58 through 62 talks about the Christians right now before the rapture who want the rapture to be delayed because they have too much to do yet they want who would rather in their heart uh, it be another 20 years 10 years or who in their heart doubt that the rapture um is that important right now in other words they have idols something that they put before Yeshua HaMashiach Jesus Christ our risen Lord that's the kind that we left behind they are also the kind that will realize come to their senses after the after the tribulation begins now this Antichrist is going to be a magic maker he's going to be a smooth talker He's going to perform miracles to make everyone think that he is actually God. He'll turn frogs into snakes. He'll turn people into, into cows. You know, he'll do whatever he wants to try to win as many people on his side as possible. And the Bible says even the elect could be fooled. And there are many definitions of the elect. Some of them have said it's 144,000. Others have said it's the wealthy elect or the elite of this earth. Others have said that um, it's the very smart, uh, very wise people. Even they could be fooled. So if you have enough Bible in you, if you have enough, because um, there will be no Holy Spirit left on the earth, but if you have enough remnant of what uh, the 144,000, the two witnesses and the Bible that you have, if you have enough faith Will I find any faith, Jesus says. If you have enough faith left in you, you will refuse and recognize, re refuse the Antichrist, the false prophet, which is the, which is the Pope, we know that, and the uh, beast, okay? You will, you will ignore their, their, their system. You will reject it because you'll know that's what the book of Revelation said. Ignore, leave them alone. Don't go with them because all of them end up in hell. They're going to let you keep your house. They're going to let you access your bank account. They're going to let you own half the earth if you take the microchip. Well, you just wrote your, your, your free ticket to hell because everyone who takes that chip will end up in hell. Here is the bottom line, the biggest test this earth will ever know. The, the, the Bible says, Jesus said, it will be the greatest test of, of mankind during the tribulation. What is that test? You cannot serve mammon and God. You cannot serve money and God. So in order to access your money, you have to take the microchip. So for a lot of the wealthy people, what do you think they'll do? For a lot of the poor people, what do you think they'll do? For a lot of the middle class, what do you think they'll do? It depends on if they know the Bible. It depends on if they really love Jesus. It depends 
and if they believe the book of Revelation. It depends on if they have an idol before God. If their money is priority, they will take the chip and their days on this earth are numbered. They'll be gone in seven years and burn in hell. If they don't take the microchip, they will become poor and homeless because they miss the rapture and they will be forced to take the microchip to keep their possessions and their money. They will become homeless. They will become worthless. They will become a nobody. They will become a prisoner. They will become everything that they probably frowned on upon before. Why? Because God has to humble them before they can make it into heaven. Money, a lot of times, makes people proud, proudful. No matter if, no matter if you you have you know ten houses or 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 fifteen houses or one house, it doesn't matter. the The point is, is once you gain something, pride has the open door to try to take you over, like you're better than somebody else that doesn't have what you have. During the tribulation, everyone that has that prideful attitude, if they want to make heaven. They're going to have to realize that all that doesn't matter anymore. And being humble before God and walking away from all earthly possessions is all that will matter during this seven-year tribulation. They go die for Christ, they get it over. They come back with us. We're in heaven for seven years. So those that make the rapture, we are in heaven for seven years at the marriage of the We are in heaven enjoying heaven and we come back after seven years and pick up where we left off. Replenish the earth for a thousand years with Jesus. It's going to be so wonderful where we can come back. I don't know the state of our body because we're going to have our glorified bodies. I'm not exactly sure the state of our body. I don't know how all that works, but I do know that we will be back with Jesus to rule and reign. And all those wealthy people that put their mansion and their money before Jesus, all, all the people that made heaven, We'll get it. And all those wealthy people that, that humbled themselves and walked away from their mansion and walked away from their money, ah, they will get it all back and more. That's how God works. So it's not a boo-hoo on the wealthy, no. It's a boo-hoo on the wealthy who continue to put money before God or Bible reading. It's a boo-hoo on the wealthy that want to take the microchip to stay wealthy and think that the one world order is good, no. The, the great part is, is it's not a matter of how fat your bank account is. It's a matter of how soft your heart is. A hard heart God will not accept. But one that loves the Lord and is willing to be obedient and teachable, God embraces. Of course, having money in the bank is important on this earth. Are you kidding? The Bible even says money is the answer to all things on this earth. Yes, it takes money to put gas in your car. It takes money to put food on your table. It takes money to function, goodness gracious. So, of course, the more money, the happier we are. However, the point is, is why uh, that we don't want to encourage people to think that the rapture is going to be delayed and therefore they can live to please themselves or think that they can take the microchip and still make heaven. Just follow the Bible. The Bible is our instruction. All of us pastors, preachers, prophets, teachers, and evangelists, we do not make up our own gospel. We just repeat what the Bible says. And God gives us different revelation and different revelation and different revelation. If he told all of us the same thing, by golly, and if we all knew everything, we wouldn't need each other, and we would be God. First of all, we need each other, and we're not God. I don't care what religion tells you about this. Yes, he puts a portion of him inside us, so we have a piece of our God inside of us. But uh, he's much greater than us. His ways are higher than our ways. His thoughts are higher than our thoughts. And therefore, he wants us to work together. Love your neighbors yourself, and love the Lord their God with all your heart. He wants us to work together, and therefore... Us prophets, we do not hear all of it all the time. We hear a piece of it some of the time. Every single one of us is that way. Jesus Christ, Yeshua HaMashiach, the Holy Spirit, and God Almighty are the only ones that know it all the time. So um, encourage one another that Jesus is coming back. And let's be ready, whether it's in 2017 or sometime else. And if you miss it, 
don't take the microchip, whatever you do. Dive into God like never before. Be prepared to walk away from everything you have, and I mean everything you have. Your house, your car, your bank account, and eventually your clothes. Everyone, the Bible says everything that is high will be brought low. And in heaven, everything that was low will be accelerated, accelerated and brought high up there. So all the Christians that have money now that know God in their head, they don't, they don't love him enough to spend quality time with him in their heart, which means reading their Bible, prayer and worship every day. Every time we feed our spirit, our, our natural man, we need to feed our spirit man. How do you feed your spirit man? Read your Bible, prayer and worship. Read your Bible, prayer, and worship. How do you dress him? You put the whole armor of God on. Simply say, I put the whole armor of God on me. I dress myself every day, and I dress my spirit man every day with the whole armor of God. And then you you give it its weapons. No weapon formed against me prospers. Then the demon has to go pick on somebody else. The arrows of, of offense bounce off you and go on someone else. It's not prepared spiritually. Okay, I hope all of that makes sense. Uh, not really getting off the rabbit tail, trail, but just trying to give the tribulation saints some hope to let them know that it's not the end of the road. Uh, what you know in your spirit, what the 144,000 will be telling you, what the two witnesses will show you, uh, the Ten Commandments will be, will be aired, um, the real Ten Commandments to let everyone know that they should never be ignored. All of these awesome things will be exposed during the tribulation for all the tribulation saints to never give in to the one world order microchip 666 mark of the beast and whatever pretty colorful wrapping they have it in don't take it and prepare to die for Christ it's that simple all right uh, thank God it's only a seven-year period thank God it's not a 57 year period or a prison sentence of 27 years or something it's just a seven-year period and the, the sooner you get it over with, the better. All right. Well, on that note, God bless you. I thank you um, for for paying attention. And let's, let's move on to the next subject and uh, get this thing prepared for you. This is a one-time video we may divide up into several sections. But uh, this one will be in whole. But either way, I'm glad you're listening. And let's move on. Okay. Next thought. Now. The feast, the three fall feasts, every one of them have to do with the Messiah. The first feast is the Feast of Trumpets. This is when he calls his children home, the tribulation, pre-tribulation saints. Okay? The second, Yom Kippur, is seven days later. Why seven days later? This represents the seven years of tribulation. And at the end of the tribulation, Jesus will come back and land at the eastern gate with his white horse, put his foot down. The battle of Armageddon will be over. He will stop the enemy. Michael will smash the head of Satan. And it's called the Day of Atonement or the Day of Reckoning or Yom Kippur. It's called, it's over. All debt canceled. Let me clean the slate. So in this case, Yom Kippur is the, la is the ending of the tribulation one day event all the other feasts are three to ten days three to nine days if you will okay now we move on to the feast of tabernacles and that is when jesus comes back and rules and reigns with all of us on this earth for the millennium and that is when he tabernacles with his saints tabernacles so everything lines up all seven jewish holy day feasts have to do with the Messiah, Yeshua HaMashiach. They do not have to do with you and I. It's not like a Thanksgiving. It's like a Christmas, okay, or a first fruits. Um, it's something to do with Jesus Christ. So what does Feast of Trumpets have to do with Jesus Christ? The one that's happening right now. Gracious me. September 23rd says Virgo's coming out of the womb. Virgo represents Israel. Jesus is a Jew. King Jupiter represents Jesus and us, because we are now one, we are Christians, coming out to be caught up to, to heaven. That's what the Bible says. So we will be caught up to heaven, okay? Who catches us up? Jesus catches us up. What happens after that? We sit down and we enjoy a big meal with Jesus, the marriage supper of the Lamb. We marry Jesus in heaven as his bride. 
Okay. So now, why was it most significant? Not just all the signs, but when all the signs are happening right before the Feast of Trumpets, that's what Jesus said, before the great and terrible day of our Lord, all these things will happen. Oh, there's another verse, Joel chapter 2, verse 31. Before the great and terrible day of the Lord, the sun will be darkened and the moon will turn to blood. Joel saw it. John saw it. Paul saw it. Daniel saw it. Come on. Jesus spoke of it. How long will God tarry with stubborn, selfish, arrogant people? He's done. The rapture is upon us. The tribulation will happen. And if by chance, as is Dr. Hope saying, yes, for sure, the rapture is going to happen September 2017? No. All I'm saying is, is uh, there are too many signs happening. Something is going to happen. And what the Bible says that something is, is the catching up of his church. Why? because he doesn't want us getting the wrath poured out on this earth because we lived a righteous life the best we could. I don't care if you get saved at the last minute and give it all to God at the, do it so you make the rapture man be ready. The catching away is so you are not caught in the wrath in the trap and you stay holy before the Lord. Oh, oh. Oh, God Almighty, forgive us for every word, thought, and deed that we've said wrong in your sight. Help us repent. Say strong in you. In Jesus' mighty, powerful name, we seal this prayer with the blood of Jesus, the fire of the Holy Spirit, and the whole armor of God, and our angels that are fighting on our behalf to not only make sure the prayer gets into heaven, but back down to earth safe. In Jesus' mighty name, per Daniel chapter 3. In Jesus' name, amen. Okay. So here are 33 signs that I just gave you. And I've typed them on the screen for you. I've spoken them in the class and expect them to happen. I'm very, very excited. Knowing, very excited, knowing that all these signs are happening. The water has broken. The dilating is taking place and the baby's on its way. Whether we're ready or not, the signs are here. We can't stop the signs, so we better be ready. For any of you listening that have not truly accepted Jesus Christ into your heart, this is not a mind thing. Anybody can read the Bible and say, yeah, I believe, yeah, I know. Anybody can read it as head knowledge. He's looking for the next step. Even the devil knows the Bible. He's got head knowledge. The demons know the Bible. They have head knowledge. But what about heart knowledge? Heart means I want to, I love it, I want to read my Bible, I don't have to read my Bible. I want to go to church, I don't have to go to church. I want to worship privately in my prayer room, I don't have to. And I want to make the rapture. I don't care about the house, the car, all the fancy stuff, the career. That everything's on hold, I get a seven year vacation in the heavens. I come back and pick up where I left off better than I've ever been before. All the negative is gone, and I'm on my way. Heavenly Father, I thank you. Will you please pray with me, all of you, you that do not have Jesus in your heart. Forgive me of my sin, Lord Jesus. Repeat after me. I believe, I believe you died on the cross for me and rose again the third day. You are the risen Son of God. You are the Messiah. Forgive me for my ignorance and foolishness, stubbornness, pridefulness, and selfishness. Help me be worthy to make the rapture, like your word says. Help me love to read my Bible. Help me love to worship and spend time with you more than anything else. Help me seek God first for everyone and everything else. I ask this, and I ask for the Holy Spirit's help immediately to remove everything out of my life that should not be there, 
and add everything that should. Quickly, quickly, Lord, I ask you, because the time is at hand and you are at the door, like Matthew chapter 25 says, I don't want to be left behind. I don't want to be half filled with the Holy Spirit. I want to be all the way filled with the Holy Spirit, completely filled with the Holy Spirit. Jesus' mighty name, help me be rapture ready. And more importantly, help me bring as many people to heaven with me as possible. Jesus brought all the saints of old, the 144,000, brought a great multitude with them. Who can we bring with us? In Jesus' name, who have you witnessed to today? Who do you plan to witness to tomorrow? Who can you lead to Jesus Christ? Who can you tell, don't take the microchip if you have to die for Christ? Who can you talk to and witness today? Please hurry. Read your Bible. Meditate on it. Get to heaven. And I will meet you there. Sing with you there. Speak with you there. Dance with you there. And worship our Heavenly Father, Jesus Christ, before the throne of God. In Jesus' mighty name and the Holy Spirit is coming with us. Ha! Jesus' mighty, powerful name.